Now we're going to talk about Sancerre, which is very fun to do because um, pretty often, or it's not as often in natural wine that we are able to um, have designated wines because a lot of times they are either not able to or they're just not quite as common to find. So I have two this month, uh, which I'm stoked about. We have Sancerre and we have Chianti, depending on what club you're in. And um, generally, like from my traditional wine background, um, Sancerre has always been one of my favorite uh, regions. And uh, it was the thing that got my mom off of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and broadened her horizons a bit. Um, so yeah, just generally really excited to have this one. Um, it's from Francois Le Saint, which is um, a producer that has quite a few hectares um, in the region and like a very storied history with his family there but he obviously is doing everything naturally um so yeah let's try it out um color is nice it has i think it has a year of aging in stainless steel and um so it's starting to get slightly more gold um and then on the nose so you can definitely tell that it's Sauvignon Blanc um but it's honestly not quite as uh, aromatic as some of the other versions of Sauvignon Blanc that you'll see. Um, like I'm not getting really grapefruit on it. I'm getting more like candied lemon or like a uh, zestiness. Um, a little bit of petrol actually. Petrol, there's, <laughs> if you didn't know what gasoline smells like, it turns out that that's what like normally you get it in Riesling on these. Um, so we don't have to be fancy. That's just, again, we're drinking a traditional sow wine. So it brings me back to my traditional grid. Um, so let's try it. That is tasty. So I was also really excited to have this one for April because uh, similar with the, if you had the Clo Marfisi um, Vermentino a few months ago, uh, people really like to talk about rosé starting, but in the spring, I love to have like shine a really great light on white wines, um, just because I feel like the stuff that we're eating right now is what I want to put with this. So uh, I forgot to talk about what it tastes like. Just delicious, but um, that candied lemon is still there. I would say like lime zest is kind of what I'm getting on the finish. It's uh, mainly mainly the fruit is what I'm focusing on, but there's certainly like the whole minerality aspect to it. Um, it's definitely complex. The finish is really long. This is a lovely, beautiful example of a Sancerre. Um, and then talking about what to pair it with, uh, I would love to put this with like things you might eat for lunch. Like I would have this with a salad. I would have this with like, I should have had it with the lunch I literally just had. I had like a prosciutto mozzarella and tomato sandwich. And this would have been so nice with that. Um, yeah, as far as like lunch wines go, I love Sancerre, um, for that or like, uh, sparkling wines. Um, you could also have it with something for dinner. Like we're planning on having a, like, uh, like a cannellini bean pasta later this week with kale. Maybe that's what I'll actually open this for. I coravond it for this. So maybe that's what I'll actually open it for. Cause it would go great with that too. So yay for having traditional wines sometimes. I hope you really enjoy this one. If you haven't had Sancerre before, I would say this is a pretty good representation of what it typically tastes like, but this one's natural, which makes it even better. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs>